Hello, Mark Crossfield here today. We've got the lob wedge out. We're close to the green. We've got a nice sunny day. We're going to do a bit of pitching and see if we can help you guys get your scores lower by pitching that ball closer to the hole. So pitching, we're talking about approach play, we're talking about when you're too close to make a full swing basically. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to hit a half kind of stroke with a lofty club. So I've got a lob wedge in my hand, you could be doing it with a pitching wedge, you could be doing this with a sand wedge, you can also do this shot with an iron iron. So you're talking about a three quarter controlled shot. Now the trick with this shot is to treat it as a different shot to your full normal iron shots. Lots of people I see try to play this shot, what they're doing is they're hitting a sand wedge or a lob wedge, but they're trying to hit it slower while still making the full action, full motion, full follow through swing that they'd make with their severed iron and what have you. You've got to try and think of a pitch as a completely different shot. It's not the same as those full shots. It's a knockdown, smaller version of them. So, first thing you've got to think about, you've got to think about trying to get the ball position slightly closer to your back foot. Now the reason you want to get the ball closer to your back foot is it's going to encourage you to hit down on the ball a bit better. It's going to encourage you to get the ball first then the ground second. The biggest problem with pitching is this kind of hitting up temptation that golfers get. So what happens, you get a lofty club and golfers make this connection in their mind where to get the ball up in the air, they've got to do it. They've got to actually send the ball up in the air by trying to lift the thing. Now, what you should be doing with a pitch shot is you should be actually trying to hit down on the ball, which creates a bit more spin, gives you more control. And by hitting down on the ball, the ball will ride the face, which then spins it up into the air. So it's the loft of the club that's getting the ball up in the air. It's this fella here, the angle. It's not the fact that you're hitting up. It's more the fact that you're trying to hit down into the back of the ball. That's what's giving it the lift. So ball back in your stance. That's going to help you get that hitting down desired strike that you're after. Next thing you've got to do, and this is crucial, so many people miss this point. I want you to imagine that out of the top of the club there's a laser basically shooting out the top of the club. So at the back end of the club here there's a laser that just shoots off into infinity. Now you need to make sure that laser doesn't touch your body. So what I mean by this is your hands are forward enough so the laser just misses your left pocket, just misses your left side. See so many people central hands as they're starting their pitch shots which again always encourages this kind of flicking forward trying to hit up into the air action. So you've got to try and make sure you've got the ball back of centre, so not opposite the right foot, it's just back an inch day of centre of the stars. And you've got to make sure the butt end of the club, so your hands are forward, is missing your left side. Now once you've got those two angles set up, you'll feel this kind of urge hopefully to want to lean on your left side. Let that happen. Get 70% of your weight on your left foot when you're starting a pitch. So you've got the ball back in your stance, helping you hit down on the ball. You've got your hands set forward again, helping you hit down on the back of that ball. Also what happens, you've got your weight forward, all helping you to hit down on the ball. Now, once you've got those angles set up, the trick in your backswing is to try and make sure you understand those angles. Try and make sure you, under, you, you kind of take those angles onto the swing, onto the shot. So what I mean by that is I see people set up this way, and then what happens, they make a backswing and they just rock their weight all onto their back foot. So what you're doing is you're undoing all that good work you've done at the beginning, all that nice setting forward of the ball to try and hit down on it. As soon as you make your backswing, you just undo it. And that's no good. That's again going to encourage you to hit the ground first, hit up of the ball and get those horrible uh, fin shots that shoot along the floor. So you've got to make sure once you've got your setup, ball back a centre, hands forward, weight forward. As you make your backswing, just try and make sure you feel your weight stays on your left foot. You want to feel that weight staying forwards. Try and help you hit down on the back of that ball first. Now, when it comes to the swing, it's, it's a bit of a case of getting on your range, getting on your practice area and a bit of trial and error. You want to get into the, uh, the habit with a pitch shot, so you're trying to follow the same plane ideas that you're doing with your normal swing, you're trying to follow the same grip ideas that you do with your normal swing. The only thing you can do with the grip to help you get a bit more control is maybe come down the shaft, subject to how far you want to pitch the ball. The further you want to pitch it, nearer the top you get. The lower, the shorter distance you want to pitch it, the more you come down the grip. Um, so. Everything's the same in your thoughts of your swing, but what you're trying to do, obviously apart from keeping your weight on that left side as you make your back swing, is you're trying to control the distance a lot more by how you turn your body. So you don't want your arms separating away from your body, which is something I see a lot. So what I mean by that is people kind of lock down their legs, lock down their body, and just kind of swing their arms at it. 
you've got to try and get a feeling for your distance by how far you're turning and then turning back through to the ball. So for instance, if I want to hit the ball X distance, say a medium distance for me, I'm going to turn my body a medium distance and when my body stops turning, my arms stop. So it's very connected between my body and my arms. There's no separation or bending of the arm, which will only create a quite an inconsistent strike, bearing in mind you've got quite a sharp club in your hands. So think about the distance more in the fact of how you turn your body. So a medium shape uh, or medium sized pitch for me, I'm going to do my body a medium sized turn backwards and forwards. And again, when my shoulders stop, the club stops on the way through. When my shoulders stop and my body stops turning, the club stops also. It gives this very connected, rhythmical kind of a strike. Um, so for distance wise, it's a case of getting on the range, working out how far you need to turn your body and at what speed to generate your different distances. The best pitchers do two things. They get these kind of basic uh, setup points right and they get this basic understanding of kind of connecting their turn up with the, with the club and the, you know, the shoulders are dictating the distance with the arms. But also what they do is they love practicing pitching. They enjoy it. They want to practice pitching. They want to try and see the ball landing by the hole. Not enough golfers practice this kind of shot and it's such an important shot if you want to get out there scoring. But guys, that's quite a basic look of pitching. Hope that gives you some ideas of what you're trying to do. Uh, post a comment, let me know um, if that helps you or not. I'll be interested in what you've got to say. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.